I recently got my R5C and I haven't really had the chance to use it that much. We shot parts of the last YouTube video with it, we're currently testing some ND filters for it, but I haven't used it for photography at all. And then there was a gig coming along for a startup shooting some business portraits. And I thought that I'm using the R5C for the first time to get a feel for it, because I really thought that the files of the R5C were the exact same of the original R5. Turns out, they're not. So Lightroom can't use them, Adobe Photoshop can't use them, none of the apps that I had on my computer could actually read the raw files of the R5C. So that was somewhat of a problem, but I found a solution and I will tell you after the intro. My name is Evan Cooper and welcome to Monkey Pixels. I tried all kinds of different apps, Adobe DNG Converter, Lightroom, Photoshop, none of them could actually work with the raw files except for Kenneth's own tool, the DPP. The problem with this is that it really doesn't do me any good. I shot 500 pictures, I wanted to actually manipulate them within Lightroom and the only option that I had was processing the raw files in there and then exporting them to JPEG, which would have taken a long time and it's a hassle to do. The other option would be to actually convert them into TIFF files, but TIFF files are insane huge and I work with Lightroom CC so that is the cloud version and I didn't want to upload 250 gigabytes into the cloud so I needed to find a different solution so I posted it online and for the most part nobody actually had a solution except for one guy so that is pretty cool because he reached out and he had a tool that is called EXIF tools and that tool is free and with this one you can actually change the metadata of your camera. So the only thing you need to do within that tool is to change the camera name from R5C to R5 and then Lightroom, Photoshop, DNG Converter and all the other apps actually think that those files are shot on the original R5 and they can use them. And in my opinion, that's pretty stupid because it's not the actual files that can be read by Lightroom and all the other programs. It's just that the program thinks it's a different camera and they can't. Why can't Adobe just change it within a second of release of a new camera because it's literally just taking away the C. But anyway, so here's how it works. So the first thing you need to do is you go to exiftool.org and you download the app either for Windows or for Mac and it's totally free. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated than that because the app doesn't really have a graphic user interface. So if you're on Mac, you need to use the terminal and if you're on Windows, you need to use the command prompt. The second thing you need to do is you need to actually download all of your raw files onto your computer or an external hard drive and I suggest just putting all of them in one folder. So now all you need to do is you need to you put this one into terminal or your command prompt and it's something like exif tool change camera r5 or something and i will display it here but i will also put it down in the description below so you can just copy and paste it into terminal or command prompt and then this command line is followed by the actual path of the folder where all of your pictures are in which you want to have changed and the way i did it is i just copied the folder and pasted it after the command line in terminal and then you hit enter and that's pretty much all you need to do and everything that this command does is it duplicates all of the pictures that you want to have changed once it's called your file name underscore original and this is just the original file but then you also have the file name and this is the fake r5 raw file that you can then use and import into lightroom or any other app that you would like that can actually read the original r5 raw files and that's it. That's all you need to do to edit your native R5C RAW files in the editor of your choice until the editor comes up with an actual update. And that really saved me a lot of time and a lot of stress. Obviously, I should have tested it before I went out on a client shoot, but oh well, then lesson learned. But here's a workaround and I hope you actually found this helpful. And if you did, then please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. Subscribe for more and I hope to see you on the next one.